I'm sure a lot of you have seen the works on my machine meme. This is the classic model of operation in engineering organizations, so much so that it has become a meme. As a software engineer, you write code, your tests pass, and it works on your machine. And from that point onwards, it is not your problem. This mindset is not only dangerous and toxic, but in 2022 makes you so much less effective as a developer. Your code is your problem, even after it reaches your customer. Your code is your problem as long as it exists. So it is critical that you're aware of all the processes and hoops it goes through to make it from your machine to the customer's hand, and notably, uh, all the things that can go wrong with it. And this is where DevOps comes into play. I remember watching O'Reilly's Velocity Conference in 2009, where Paul Hammond, who was then the director of engineering at Flickr, talked about how they deployed their code more than 10 times a day at Flickr. This was the first time I came across the notion of continuous delivery. But it wasn't until about a decade later when I actually started seeing it as common practice. Even though the concept of DevOps had been established, big tech companies and smaller startups alike weren't really equipped to deploy code at such a rapid pace. I've worked in teams where deployment were done anywhere from once every six weeks to once every six months. But in 2022, the landscape has shifted drastically and DevOps is an integral part of any successful software engineering team. DevOps is also a great career option for you, especially if you don't have a solid computer science background to pursue traditional software development. But regardless of your background, in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about why every software engineer should be well-versed in DevOps practices in 2022. Hi guys, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington, and this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, everything I talk about in this video and any related material will be linked in the description below. This video also has timestamps, so feel free to jump to sections that interest you more. With that said, let's get started. See, in 2022, it is no longer a question of if organizations need DevOps or not, but rather a question of when they will adopt it. According to the DevOps Institute report, DevOps is currently the second most popular discipline applied by enterprises today, and it's only growing. So as a software engineer, it is beneficial for you to adopt and integrate with the changing practices. Um, consider Netflix, for example. They are one of the industry leaders when it comes to DevOps and automation. And they need to be because they prioritize innovation over anything else. They don't prevent engineers from accessing the production environments. They don't enforce any specific programming languages or frameworks, and all their decisions are based on data. At a first glance, this may seem risky business, yet they maintain one of the best uptime statistics, and I'm pretty sure their production environment has never gone down because of an engineer's mistake, even at their scale. So to give you more context, Netflix has hundreds of microservices, thousands of deployments to production daily, millions of customers worldwide, and billions of events being processed at any given moment. Yet, this is all managed by less than 100 DevOps engineers. The key to all this is embracing DevOps. DevOps today is so much more than just making sure your code is packaged and released. You have to manage major security concerns, which has given rise to separate operating models like DevSecOps and SecOps. Uh, while DevSecOps makes security an equal consideration alongside development and operations, SecOps focuses more on integrating the security and operations teams. According to the 2020 DevOps survey, DevSecOps achieved a must-have percentage vote of 56% in automation tool category. Additionally, according to a survey conducted by Security Compass, 75% of enterprises in US and UK have adopted DevSecOps. But security is not the only concern. In 2022, with large companies seeing throughputs of billions of events every second, data is king. Therefore, data processing and analytics in the DevOps pipeline is a major component of all modern applications. There's also machine learning to explore advanced analytics of bottlenecks and weak points along with stream processing of telemetry that has led to more operating models like data ops and model ops. DevOps is also not just about automating everything. There is an intelligence component to it, especially when majority of code written these days isn't for traditional computer software. In 2022, we also work in a world dominated by services. We have new forms of hybrid computing, adoption of microservices, serverless computing, and application 
applications that need to run on smartphones within IoT devices, which means that traditional forms of software deployments and automation don't work anymore. And there's a need for modern intelligent pipelines and automation. Platform as a service, the likes of Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud is expected to grow at a rate of 26% to a $68 billion market in 2022. Similar growth is expected in the infrastructure as a service and database as a service markets. This requires mature cost and resource management as well as automation configuration management and change management. So what does all this mean to someone who's trying to get into DevOps? It means that you need to pay special attention to DevOps and the skills required to be good at it. Speaking of learning DevOps, I've mentioned multiple times in my previous videos, and I'll do it again. The first step is to understand that DevOps is not just your IT department, it's an integral part of your engineering organization. And ideally, every software engineer in your team is also a DevOps engineer, where operations and site reliability engineers manage more critical DevOps aspects uh, for larger orgs that operate at scale. 33% of folks doing DevOps today are already software engineers, and that statistic will most likely continue to grow. Only when you consider DevOps as part of your responsibility as a software engineer, you can take a deeper look into how software can be delivered with velocity, quantity, and reduced risk for your organization and your customers. Apart from this mindset, what skills do you really need to become a good DevOps engineer then? Well, the DevOps survey of 2021 shows that agile, site reliability engineering, design and systems thinking, lean practices, VSM, and chaos engineering are all great practices to be familiar with. It's not possible for me to go over all of these in this video, but I will link a conference talk about chaos engineering at Netflix in the description below, which encapsulates a lot of these topics and is a great watch for any software engineer working in the distributed systems world. In addition to that, the survey also identified some key areas in automation that you must know in order to be successful at DevOps. Continuous integration, delivery and deployment, operations and support, and also security. And lastly, the final piece of the DevOps puzzle is extensive knowledge of the cloud and some general software engineering, namely cloud compute, operating systems, container orchestration, microservices, databases, storage, and some specific engineering frameworks. DevOps is here to stay. So the next time you say, works on my machine, think long and hard. It not only needs to work on your machine, but also needs to make it through an extensive deployment pipeline to reach millions of customers across many different devices and platforms, spread across multiple regions and zones worldwide. And it is still your problem. Also, as a new software engineer or someone changing career into software engineering, think about just how advanced DevOps has become in 2022 and consider it as a legit career choice. If any of you work on DevOps on a daily basis, let me know in the comments below what you like or dislikes about DevOps and maybe share some tips and pointers for anyone that is new to it. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel for more software engineering content. Also, follow me on Instagram at engineeringwithsav where I host monthly Q&As and answer all your direct messages. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.